So I wanted to be very intentional with my words and um, be very articulate with what I said to the seniors and really to everybody. So I wrote a letter for the seniors, but the message that I want to convey through these words is applicable to everybody. So here's what I have for you. You are adults now. Some may argue otherwise. Some people never grow up at all. But nevertheless, you are adults now. You can be charged with a crime as adults, not as minors. You can vote for the leaders of our country, state, and local governments. You can join the military and be sent to fight for our country and our freedom. By all means, you are adults now. You may still receive different, you may still receive different forms of assistance from your parents for several years, but independence is not the measure of adulthood. It's responsibility that makes you adults. Now, one thing about being an adult, getting help is always okay, but not accepting the consequences and the responsibility for your choices is not okay. So congratulations, you're adults now. So now that you're adults, I hate to say it, but you're in grave danger. I know that's not a very uplifting message for high school graduates in such an uncertain time as this, But the fact is that life is always uncertain, and it's just more obvious right now than it is in most other seasons. So since life is always uncertain, our God remains unchanged and inconsistent. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Also, I don't want to minimize the difficulties that come with adolescence. In high school, they're tough. I didn't get a t-shirt for it, but I was there and I did that all. But as young adults, you now stand in more grave danger than ever before, I believe. Here's here's what's going to happen. You're going to be lied to, you're going to be attacked, and you're going to be accused. And I'm not talking about infomercials and scams deceiving you. I'm not talking about fake news. I'm not talking about the media lying to you, and I'm not talking about the way your friends may attack you after you go through a spout of drama with them in college, maybe your roommate or some close friends. What I'm warning you of is that Satan will lie to you, Satan will attack you, and Satan will definitely accuse you. You'll be out on a new chapter that God will use to shape you more into the image of Jesus if you do let him. But in that transition, you'll also be vulnerable and more easily influenced than ever before. As you set out on this new and exciting chapter, you'll be changing and growing similar to the rate of that of a young child who's developing, and likewise, you will be just as vulnerable as such young children. So, Satan will use this and take advantage of that opportunity in your vulnerability just during such a formative transition. Satan deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, and it was said to Cain that sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must overcome it. Satan also is known as the accuser in the book of Job. When God allowed Satan to take everything from Job, Satan's main objective was to get him to blame God for his circumstances. Job's friends accused him of being the victim of karma, and I can't help but wonder if Satan was working through his very friends, accusing Job so as to incite Job to blame God. And I'm wondering if sometimes Satan does the same with us. I must also clarify, when I say that Satan is going to lie, attack, and accuse you, I don't think it'll be as obvious as you think. I don't think his primary attack will be external, though that would be too obvious. He knows how smart y'all are, the seniors. He may tempt you with the things commonly known to attract college kids, like wild parties, substance abuse, sexual immorality, and my favorite, irresponsibility. But unfortunately, I'm confident that his primary weapon against you will be much more camouflaged. He will try to destroy you from the inside out with your own thoughts and fears, He knows that our life and our sustenance is in Christ. He knows that we are the branches of Christ, the vine, living by his blood and flesh, and he knows that apart from Christ, we can do nothing. He also knows that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, and that nothing can stand against us if we are connected to the very one who has power over death. He knows that our Father is the living one who has died and is now alive forever and ever and holds the very keys of Hades and death in his hands. So, with these in mind, he will tempt you, accuse you, and lie to you, all in subtle ways 
to get you to not focus on your Savior, but instead to fear and doubt and stop approaching with confidence the throne of mercy in time of need. So the following lies may circle through your head as they do through most people. With what I've done, there's no use turning back to God. It's too bad now. God can forgive others, but I'm way worse. He doesn't understand where I am in my shoes. Or the most stereotypical one, I haven't been to church much, I haven't been to youth group much, I haven't done many mission trips or Bible studies, I haven't read my Bible and prayed enough. Or people don't like me, so there must be something wrong with me, and God probably agrees with those kinds of people. Or real Christians shouldn't be depressed like I am. Real Christians shouldn't be anxious like I am. Real Christians don't deal with private sin like I do. And then this one you will definitely experience as college kids, whether biology or another class, you may think this lie. If I don't do well enough on this biology test, I'll probably fail the class, lose my scholarship, have to drop out, not have any friends, never get married, and eventually be homeless. And the truth is that all of the above lies are just as ridiculous as the last one. But they still circle in our minds, causing us anxiety. So, on the contrary, this is the truth. You are a child of God. Folks like you are just who Jesus came to seek and save. You were worth seeking. He didn't just save you, God sought you out. He looked for you. He diligently pursued you and bought you back with the greatest ransom price he had. The mission of Jesus was no act of convenience. And when I say you, don't assume it applies to everyone in the room except for you. This message is for the seniors, it's for myself, it's for everybody. In contrast to the mission of Satan, the mission of Jesus is the opposite. While Satan's native language is deceit and his mission is to keep you away from the only one who can save you, Jesus is the way that can save you. Satan speaks lies and Jesus is the truth. Satan wants to keep you away from God and Jesus is God. And he came to you at your level. Jesus is the great high priest who sympathizes with us in our weakness so that we can confidently approach him in time of need. He's not beyond us. Isaiah says that he was a man of sorrows. He's the one who became flesh and made his dwelling among us. In the beginning, when he was born, he was named Emmanuel. His name is God with us. He's the image of the invisible God who invites us to the table to eat and drink of his body and blood that were broken and spilled so that we may have life in him. He has swallowed death and offers eternal life. He dwells in unapproachable light, and luckily for us, the unapproachable light has approached us. He holds the keys of death and Hades, and he stands at your door and he knocks. And if you hear his voice and open that door, he will come in and eat with you. That's the truth. Stop believing the lies and letting them circle in your mind. Stop listening to the lies and stop telling yourself the lies. The words of Jesus, on the other hand, are the bread we live on. Feast on that bread. Listen to that truth. Satan wants to deceive you and and those lies to circle in your mind to keep you from approaching God. But let the truth of Jesus renew your mind. As you embark on this great period of transition and growth in all the grand things that you'll do, and more importantly, in all the grand things God will do through you, don't believe the lies. Remain in the true vine, and you will be more than conquerors. So, congratulations. You're adults now, but you're always children of God.